Welcome back to Sportsline. I'm Kevin Batiste. He's Jack Doucet. So many games and not enough time. Let's get right to it. Central coming off that coming off a tough loss to Zachary last week. Today they hosted Woodlawn and pick it up in the early first quarter. No score. The Panthers are going to be back to punt, but it's going to be blocked by Central's Connor Scott. He is going to scoop and score right in front of his student section for the touchdown. Excuse me. Says Central strikes first, seven to nothing. A few drives later, Woodlawn back to punt again, and it is blocked again. So a lot of uh, special teams mistakes for Marcus Randall's team. That one's not a touchdown, but it does set up Central's offense in good position. Central's offense working with a short field. Jackson Furman is going to tuck, keep, and get into the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point good. Wildcats now up two scores, 14 to nothing. Woodlawn went three and out, so Central with the ball again. This time they give it to their tailback, Damon Blocker, who breaks off a strong run. Guys trying to bring him down. Eventually, he's brought down inside the red zone. A few plays later, Furman is going to keep it again. Nice little option fake. And he is back into the end zone as the Wildcats go up 21 0, and they keep the shutout. 35 to nothing is the final. Thursday night action, the Sterlington Panthers made a long trip to take on the Amy Warriors. Hagen Herring for the visiting team, carrying the ball for a first down for the Panthers. And they would keep the ball on the ground a lot. It is Gavin Evans runs hard for a few yards into the red zone, and then Evans would capitalize, uh, finish the drive with the score. Sterlington beats a meet 24 to 18, the final score on Thursday night. All right, next up, it is uh, St. John and East Iberville. Tigers punting, Gage Blanchard will block it. Hey, this is the block punt segment, and uh, Jordan Dorsey takes it home, seven to nothing, St. John. Tigers back on offense. There is a fumbled exchange with the running back, and East Iberville will recover as the ball is on the turf. That would lead to Ahmad Wilson. Bang them drums. He takes it inside the uh, four-yard line. Nice carry here. And on the next play, it's one of those guys with uh, three names, like Tommy Lee Jones. Michael Patrick Edwards into the end zone for St. John to make it a 14 to nothing advantage. Let's take a look at our final score from that contest. St. John, boy, they roll 54 to 14. Jock, the theme for me tonight was homecomings in town. Starting at Episcopal, the Knights were hosting East Feliciana. Both teams second place in District 6 2 way trying to keep pace with Dunham at the top spot. Fourth play from scrimmage, Episcopal is going to get the ball to Braden George on the toss left. He fouls his blockers, make a man miss, and then gets into the end zone for the 36-yard touchdown run. Extra point was good. Knights on the board first, seven to nothing. On Episcopal's third drive of the game, they're going to give it to their other bell cow, Reed Chauvin, who goes up the middle, off the guard, makes a cut before taking off for the 28-yard touchdown. Extra point good again. Knights rolling 14 to nothing. Push-ups for the Episcopal Chiliers, and they would do a lot of them tonight. After another three and out from East Bell's offense, Episcopal's uh, offense back at it again. Braden George, 30-yard touchdown run, 21 to nothing as the Knights go on to win. 50 to 14 is the final. All right, we'll talk about... Oh, what's next? All right, we'll talk about Madison Prep and much more. Okay, we got Parkview and Port Allen. It was homecoming night at Parkview. Congratulations to Hannah Como on being named this year's Parkview Homecoming Queen. Pick up in the second quarter, Parkview up 28-0. Port Allen offense avoid the shutout as they finally get into the end zone. Landon Jones with the touchdown. Two-point converter, no good. 28-6 Parkview. Third quarter, Eagles near the red zone. Former sports line player of the week, Abram Johnson, stretches out the play, finds Cameron Fenton in the back of the end zone, who comes down with a nice toe tap touchdown, 35 to six Parkview, nice little acrobatic catch right there. Some tight photography, I must say also, whoever uh, shot this. Oh, 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 you shouldn't have, just a little bit. <laughs> Parkview's <laughs> offense back at it again. Johnston is gonna hit Wesley Martin. Martin trucks over a defender for a big gain, and they're gonna tack on 15 more yards because of an unsportsmanlike conduct. Come on guys, it's just football. And then a few plays later, the Eagles Cash in as Johnston hits Brock Como for the touchdown. 42 to 6 Parkview as the Eagles go on to win 49 to 12. No problem in this one. 
All right, I believe that is our, oh, no, now we're moving on to Madison Prep and Glen Oaks, and this game was played at Glen Oaks this evening. Chargers up 23 to nothing in the second quarter. Madison Prep defense harassing the quarterback, Ryan Varese, and Jonathan Profit with the pressure and sack on the QB. He's called in the grass. Glen Oaks punts from their own end zone. Andre Gibson gathers the line drive after a few hops, weaves his way down the sideline, and eventually will find the end zone. There were penalty flags on the play, but uh, they did not affect Madison Prep because the touchdown would stand, and it was 29 to nothing at that point. Then Madison Prep back on, uh, well, here's a crazy play before that. Glen Oaks has the ball. It snapped over the quarterback's head. That is Catron Hargrove. Hargrove says, hey, man, I'm in trouble. You take it. <laughs> Jaquan Jackson scoops it up. This is old school football follies. We used to watch this in the 80s and 90s, you know. You played a little goofy music, dun, 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 you know, or the cantina band from you know, Star Wars, whatever. The, the Harlem Globe try the music in the background. He's out of bounds, but all of that goes for naught because there's a block in the back. Oh Why did I God. show it to you? Because it was entertaining. All right. Now Madison Prep back on offense. Tony Lewis, he finds the hole, and he finds the end zone gliding in to make it 35 to nothing. Madison Prep looking good. Final score in this one. Eight to nothing. The Chargers get it done. All right, we got some more games coming up on Sports Line Friday night. Even go back to Thursday night, a thriller over in Kentwood between them and Southern Lab. And I think John Eves might be coming back. Y'all stay right there.